Hi, welcome to Old Guys Gentlemen Flex Fountain Pens, episode number 50. I've done 50 of these, plus there's some unnumbered ones, so it's probably more like 55 or 60. But enough of that, let's pay attention to this beautiful pen. This is made by uh, Edison, and it's a model called the Menlo. And I got it with a draw fill, and I'll have a little demonstration of that. And it's a uh, solid green transparent acrylic. And it's just gorgeous. You kind of have to like green to like this pen. But I sort of like demonstrators. Actually, I like demonstrators a lot. Uh, but green demonstrators or blue-green demonstrators or if there was a turquoise clear demonstrator. Uh, I, I really like that kind of design. The other thing special about this pen is that it's got a Richard uh, Binder full flex tip on it so I can use it for the Spencerian kind of writing that I like to do. Let me give you some of the dimensions and then we'll get into talking about the uh, performance. The, the posted length is six and a half inches, so that's a nice, that's a good size pen. Uh, unposted, it's five and three sixteenths. Um, I can write with that, uh, maybe just a little bit short. I prefer posted. Capped, it's five and three sixteenths, good size. The section, about midsection, is about three eighths of an inch, and I might wish another eighth of an inch in there, but not too many pens have that thick of a section. So it, it's a good it's a good size section. Barrel diameter is a half an inch, and that's great. Okay, so now let's take a look at the um, the pen itself. So let me show you how we fill this Edison Menlo pen because it has a unique pen filling mechanism that I kind of like. Uh, and I'll be filling it full of uh, Mont Blanc ink and this is, happens to be sitting in the new color of my tilt wells. Um, it's called turquoise, although it looks kind of like baby blue, somewhere in between there. But I'm having to use this because this ink bottle is um, uh, less than half full. So, caps comes off pretty quickly. You have to unscrew the back end, and you have this little plunger here. Okay, I cut that off from the screen, but one of the things I don't like is this little guy likes to roll around. <laughs> it's not a terrible thing, it's just something you gotta keep your eye on. It's like this thing wants to get lost. <laughs> okay, so, put it in here like this. And the plunger, and you see we already got uh, a fair amount of ink. Come back in and just do this a few times and you just kind of fill it up. And that's about as far as I'm going to fill it. But you can see how that fill up really nicely. It's pretty easy to clean too. I just put it under a faucet and, and pump this thing. And maybe that's not the recommended way of doing it, but it cleans up pretty quickly. So that's how we fill it. As I said before, it's the Edison Menlo, a solid green transparent acrylic, um, full flex. You can see how fine these lines are. Just draw a few more here. And you have to learn how to do this with a light hand because this is a, it's a very flexible nib. Very tiny. It's a very tiny flexible nib that gets you that triple extra fine. It can draw from uh, somewhere between a triple extra fine, which is what it's advertised at, or if you do a really light hand you can get uh, like um, uh, 4x fine. And you can see how you can flex it out to a you know triple x bold, broad I mean. But I probably don't want to push it that far. There's actually warnings that come in the box. But it's, it's very flexy. It's almost like a wet noodle. Uh, it's advertised as full flex. It's certainly full flex. There is uh, some feedback. I don't know if you can hear that. Which I guess you would expect with um, this fine of a nib. 
doesn't bother me, it might bother some people. It's, but it's, it's very responsive, as you can see from here. I don't know why I make that noise. Now this is uh, one, one thing that's not so great. If you, if you do this kind of writing, or if you do a lot of spreading, it'll get you through some letters like this as long as you do them, as long as you don't do them too quickly but the feed will run out. And that depends on the ink. Uh, this is the Mont Blanc Elixir Collection Azure. And it's a fairly wet ink. I have another ink. Let me talk about that for a second. You know, I actually came up with this for another pen that I'll show you a comparison on. This is a, um, a John Modishaw uh, F.A. nib that was modified in the same manner as, as this one. And the feed couldn't keep up with the, most of the inks that I used. Uh, even, even the Iroshizuku, which is fairly wet, wouldn't keep up with the kind of writing that I like to do. So what I ended up doing was I got a hold of something called Kodak Photoflow, and it's um, a wetting agent that they use in photography. And what I did was created a 25% solution of it. And then through a bunch of experiments, uh, I came up with that sort of dilution. Then I took uh, one milliliter of that and added it to this 50 milliliter bottle. So it's a, a small amount, but it's enough to make this really wet. And it, it works perfectly in this pen. Uh, when I saw some of the, the issues here, I tried this ink in here, and it solved all those issues, but it was almost too wet and created feathering, even on this um, Clairefontaine kind of uh, paper. So, so I went back to just regular ink, and all I have to do is remember not to spread the tines too far, which you're not supposed to do anyhow. And also, to don't write really rapidly and just be aware that as, as, as you're writing, only when you're doing big line variation. Uh, for regular writing, it's, it's not an issue. So let's, let's do a writing example of, of this. So that's pretty good. Just a little bit more feedback than I like. Uh, I can kind of fix that with polishing it a little bit, but I'd be afraid that I would take away from this 
what I would call exquisite fine lines. I love, to me, uh, flex writing is about the, because some people might call it the contrast in, in line thickness, meaning how many times that original thin line can you multiply it for a much broader line. And if you can start out really thin, the difference between that and a much bolder line becomes more pronounced, more fun to write with, and looks cooler, even with my crummy Spencerian kind of writing. Uh, the other thing I wanted to do was to show a comparison between these two. You've seen how this one writes. So, so this is the, the Pilot Heritage 912 with an F.A. nib modified by John Modishaw for, the, for Spencerian. Uh, a different shape nib. Uh, the F.A. nib, the one on the right, uh, has a little cuts on the side, so it was made soft to begin with. So we'll just write some of the letters here. So this has got a different ink in it that flows a little bit better. Uh, I think I did polish this one a little bit. It is a little bit smoother than the other one, but you can probably see that the fineness isn't quite as fine over here, but the spread of this, I feel much more comfortable for some reason doing larger line variations with this one over that one. So in summary, I have to say I love this pen. I love the way it looks. It's just it's just beautiful to me. <laughs> Simple, uh, but beautiful. The, um, the filling system is great. The cleaning is easy, and you get to see your progress real, real quickly, and it cleans up really well. I love how fine Richard Bender um, uh, made the nib. I love how flexy he made it. The stuff is just OK, and I'll tell you right now, there's nothing bad about this pen. Our, this barrel cap is going to be real easy to lose someday. I'm going to be careful not to lose it because I'm not, I probably can't get it. I don't know if I can get a matching one or not. Uh, well, the other thing I notice is that if you, um, if you post it too hard, you should never do that because you put little wear marks on here. And then you try and take this out it actually removes the cap to the barrel. And all I have to do is don't put it on too tightly or just rotate the other way to come out. But to me, uh, that could be a little bit of design flaw. Maybe there's no way to get around it. No one, maybe no one handles their pens as brutally as I do. The other thing I didn't like is uh, the 10 week wait, wait to get it. They actually advertised 12 weeks, so they got it here ahead of time, but that's just a long time to wait. I ordered it a couple weeks before Christmas, and it's now 
just the beginning of March. So it took a while. And I think part of that was they said it took extra time to, um, once they machine this out, they come in here and they do like a, some sort of a cleaning operation that gets you that extra transparency. And I'm glad they did that. The cost was a little hard to stomach, about 685 bucks for me, sh sh the cost shipped. Uh, and that's with the, the more expensive Binder uh, Triple Extra Fine Full Flex modification. I think that was quite a bit, yeah, about half the cost, or this, this pen over here, the Pilot Heritage with the modified um, thing, I think that was like maybe 50% less. But this is a plain black pen, and this one was made to my desires, <laughs> and it's really pretty, so maybe that's okay. But I won't be having a lot of these kinds of pens. Maybe if I keep saving my money, well, I don't know. And so I think that's it. Great pen, probably worth the wait, maybe worth the cost. Uh, I'll be keeping this for a while. Uh, I'll be showing this pen off. Um, this will get used a lot. This doesn't get hidden away in a case. It's expensive, but it's got to be used. It's a great pen. Thank you um, to the guys at Edison. So I hope you got some value out of this, and until next time, thank you for watching.